One of the biggest challenges to following Jesus is letting go of our old friends. Determining when to let go and when to try to persuade them is a challenge because we want to tell everybody about Jesus, especially when we come to the real Jesus and we really taste his spirit and we're changed and converted and we're given that hope and that understanding that we're forgiven and we're saved and we can go to heaven and live forever. That glorious understanding, we want to share it with people. And we're called away from our old life of sin into a holy lifestyle. This is what you're called to do. And many of us have to sacrifice a lot of painful things, a lot of relationships and friends. And so I want to talk about that process and when association is okay and when fellowship is not. And what's the difference between associating and fellowship? And what did Jesus teach? Because Jesus ate with the sinners. This is so commonly misunderstood. You see, Matthew was converted as his disciple. And then he went to Matthew's house, his disciple's house, and had dinner. Matthew, the tax collector, converted to follow Jesus, invited his friends to come hear what he had found and discovered in Christ Jesus. And that's the background in the book of Matthew, if you read it. And so it wasn't like Jesus was going to a bar and kicking back, having a drink, hanging out with sinners. He was doing his ministry work his way. And those that were being attracted around him, he had dinner with, he ate with, as he was converting Matthew and all those people that were around him. Verse 13 says, he called them to repent. He called them to repent. You see, we cannot have fellowship. I want to talk about the difference between fellowship and association. We associate, mingle with, um, cooperate with, engage, and have certain business practices and social encounters at school, in neighborhoods, grocery stores, and things like that. Associating and making contact with, having to deal with and interact with is not the same thing as fellowship. Fellowship is someone you're spiritually bonding with. And we can only spiritually bond with those that are in Christ. Fellowship is someone you spend all your time with, not just for business or social reasons, but you enjoy their company. You keep company with them. You cannot keep company with someone who rejects the Lord. You can associate. See, we're in the world associating. We're street preaching. We're going on uh, to the city from city to city and we're reaching out to lost souls. We're going on the streets to prostitutes and drug addicts. We, we invite them in to hear the message. We associate with them for the same reason Jesus associated with the lost sinners when he had dinner with them at his disciples house, Matthew. He called them to repent. That is the only reason that we go beyond association and into a more fellowship situation is if we eat dinner with the sinners, our goal, our pretense, our motives are to persuade them, influence them, convince them to repent and follow Christ with us, with us, with you. That's always the agenda. If there is fellowship beyond that, then you're going to be corrupt because they don't have the light. They don't have the Christ. They're not able to influence you positively. They're only able to corrupt you spiritually, sadly, but truthfully. So we've been given the power to lead people to salvation through the grace of God. They don't have that ability because they don't have Christ. If you fellowship and bond yourself with people who don't have Christ, eventually you're going to be corrupted or they're going to hate you. 
If you're filled with Christ and you're always in Christ and you're talking about Christ and you're praising God and you're singing to him and you're always excited about the kingdom and you're always speaking about the scriptures and you're always flowing in the spirit, that's gonna do one of two things to people around you. That's gonna encourage them, bless them, anoint them, help them, heal them, comfort them, encourage them, exhort them, right? It's gonna be a blessing to them or it's gonna annoy them. It's gonna discourage and it's gonna provoke. It's going to make people agitated. It's gonna do one of those two things. And if your association around people does not persuade them to come into the kingdom of God, then eventually they're gonna ridicule you and persecute you. You have to decide, is this person teachable or not? Am I trying to teach this person or am I just associating and fellowshipping with, the, with him and I'm not even concerned about the kingdom? See, many of you go around people and you drink and you go to your football games and you're thinking that you're being a Christian. Meanwhile, you're the one that's being suckered and influenced the wrong way. They've already made their minds up. You're not going to, to influence them. You can come around as long as you keep your big fat mouth shut about Jesus. Do you think that's the work of the Lord? You see, if you're not putting forth the effort to get them converted and to see them changed and to repent, and all you're doing is, is fellowshipping with them, that's going to corrupt you over time. You need to get out of that situation and surrender and sacrifice it for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of your soul, for his name, so that you can grow. You're not gonna grow. You're not gonna grow in the Lord if you're hanging out and associating and fellowshipping with those who reject Jesus. I'm talking about those who you've determined that you can't speak the word around. Now, there are cases and there is time and it takes time to figure that out. But you gotta be diligent and you gotta be aware. You can't forget. You gotta know your purpose. You gotta stay on top of it, okay? So if you start playing your video games and, you're, and hanging out with these people and you're not doing the work of the ministry, you're, being, you're fooling yourself. You're wasting your time. The only reason we're there is to call them to repent. That's it. If you've determined that you cannot no longer do that, it's impossible at this time, and there's nothing that can be done, then get out of the relationship. But if you feel like you're able, they're listening, they're not there yet, they're agnostic, but they're not rejecting you, they're not persecuting you too much, and you're going in there and you're putting forth the effort, and you're trying, and you're loving, and you're patient, then, then you, can, you can fellowship and associate with them more and longer. You need to have discernment and, and wisdom on this. We don't want to cut people off too quickly, right? But there will come a time when you make the sound choice to cut them off. Jesus said, I come to not bring peace. What? Yeah. He said, I come to bring a sword to divide mother and daughter, to divide father and son. Because that's what will happen to those who are really in Christ when they're around people who really reject him. Your own family, your closest friends, a sword will come and cut that relationship down the middle. See, because I can't be lukewarm. I can't compromise my faith. I'm not gonna hide. I might be tactful and gentle and meek, and there are times to keep your mouth closed. We don't beat people up over the head. We show love and mercy and compassion, and we show Christ we demonstrate Christ. Sometimes people will know that you are in Christ and you won't say a word, they'll still hate you. You don't have to preach it to them at all. They just don't like you because they know you follow Jesus. So there's all kinds of various situations and unique distinctions in all these cases. But make it known to yourself today you are not to fellowship with darkness. If your efforts aren't to call them to repent, then you need to get out. If they're misleading you, if they're rejecting you, they're rejecting Jesus. But if someone's listening, someone's peaceful, someone's willing, 
you're making progress and your goal and intention and motive is to call them to repent, then stay in the relationship. Nothing wrong with that at all. We're called to go out into the world to preach the gospel and to, and to be evangelists and to be witnesses to those who don't know Christ. But there's a point where you gotta get out of that relationship because it's, it's corrupt. And we need to ask God to guide us, give us wisdom and discernment to know right from wrong, when the timing is, and He will guide us if we're um, obeying His teachings. We can understand all these things from His Holy Spirit through His grace, right? Hallelujah, peace.